and welcome to Wild Card Showdown, the Rams against the Lions. I'm your host, Kurt Sandoval, along with Super Bowl 36 champion, Roland Williams. <laughs> a nice little piece of hardware we're going to discuss in just a minute. It is our mission, and we have accepted it, to prepare you for Sunday's playoff game at Ford Field in Detroit. Plus, we'll chat live with one of our affiliates in Detroit, WXYZ anchor Jenna Troutman, who grew up in the Motor City, get their reaction. Roland, you played tight end for the greatest show on turf. You won a Super Bowl title. You played with the Raiders. You played with the Bucks. What does it take for them to have a chance to bring one of these home? <laughs> well, that's a great question, Kurt. I, I would say it starts with a few things. First off, you got to reset. Whatever happened okay. in the regular season, that's over. It's time to be new. It's time to make sure that you get ready to perform at your highest level. If I had to think of something else, I said you better win the turnover battle. We know yeah. that probability sways in your favor when you win the turnover battle. And there's another thing now that's like a new hot topic called T.O.P., time of possession. The team that has the ball most makes it difficult for the other offense to get out there and perform, and it allows your defense to rest. I think if you do all three of those in today, NFL Kurt you have a chance to win Roland we're going to dig into those those are some great topics you can't ask for a better storyline with the Rams against the Lions let's start with the elephant in the room if you will <laughs> during the 2021 NFL offseason the Rams front office decided they're going to make a change of quarterback it was huge McVay was on vacation at the same resort as quarterback Matthew Stafford he calls less need in the front office next thing you know they trade Jared Goff for Stafford you may remember the Rams sent a couple of first round picks to Tennessee back in 2016 to get Goff who was the number one overall pick the Lions drafting Stafford number one in 2009 Look at Matthew Stafford there playing 12 seasons in Detroit. <laughs> he looks a little different. <laughs> Helped him to the postseason three times. He went 0-3. All those games on the road. Now Stafford with another playoff game on the road. But Sunday will be his first playoff game at Ford Field, which was once his home. Boy, you talk about a Hollywood script. I'm not expecting anything, to be honest with you. I was, I was asked this question um, a couple times, you know, just by friends and family, and I, I think the biggest thing for me is just go experience whatever that experience is going to be. I understand, um, you know, what the people of Detroit and what the city of Detroit meant to me in my time and my career, what they meant to my family. Um, I hope they feel that back, but at the same time, I'm not a stranger to the situation and understanding that I'm the bad guy coming to town. You know, I'm on the other team, and, uh, you know, I, I, they, don't, they don't want success for me. So whatever happens, happens. He is such a student of the game, yep. analytically studying. But how do Roland, you get ready? How do you can you prepare for that emotion that he's going to feel? Um, I think you can. I, I think the playoffs brings out that survival instinct in every single athlete. It's almost like a football version of squid games, right? Okay. 14 teams, people enter, That's but, right. all, but all must die except for one. And so I think that whatever focus you have in a regular season, it goes up to a little bit of a higher level for the playoffs, especially in this game you're returning back home against a team that you played for for so long. Someone's been binge watching on Netflix, haven't you? <laughs> Quick game. All right, hey, all kidding aside though, how do you, they say it's just another game, and you said reset. Is it just another game? They've got a lot of veterans that have won a Super Bowl, but they've got a lot of young guys too. You know, Squid games, remember? Um, <laughs> there's, there's no way possible you can go into a game that literally someone has to die at the end of the game and think that it's normal. And so as a professional, you want to show with the same intensity, focus, discipline, and do the right thing. But at the end of the night, when you know someone has to go home, Everything's a little bit more focused. Everything's a little bit more sincere. And, unfortunately, you're a little less kind to your fellow NFL players mm -hmm. in the playoffs. You mm -hmm. might try to break a finger, snap a leg, or do something you wouldn't normally. I'm just saying, you know, whatever it takes to win the game. I love your honesty here. So just to reset, folks, Sunday's going to be Stafford's first game back in Detroit since the trade. Roland, first game back is one thing in the regular season. How different is the fact that this is a playoff game? You know, the man spent 12 years of his life in Detroit. 
12 years. Detroit's like family to him, right? right. His kids, born, raised, all the things. It's their first playoff game in Detroit in 30 years. 30 years. Good gracious. You were in high school. I was in high school. My kids weren't born yet. Now he's self-admittedly the bad guy coming to town. Yep. He's not just coming back, in my opinion, for a game. He's coming back to literally break the Detroit Lions fans' hearts. What an uh, interesting saga that we get a chance to see in this playoff game. My goodness, this Kurt. is This is Kobe Bryant when he was still alive being – going to another team and coming back to face yeah. the Lakers in the playoffs. Stafford was a beloved part of the organization, not just what he did on the field, but what he did off the field. He and his wife donated a million dollars to the Say Detroit Play Center, which focuses on academics, helps students age 8 to 18 succeed. That was just the latest act that he gave back to the community. His wife went through cancer treatments there, but Sunday, you said it. He's the he's the one guy that's going against him. How will the crowd <laughs> react to this, Roland? Well, well Kurt, uh, Detroit loves him. Uh, appreciated all of his work in the community. But we're talking about Detroit, man. <laughs> they love the Lions, and they'll hate any man, woman, and child to cheer for their team. I expect the fans to be respectfully mean and callous in this football game. Well, the Rams had Jared Goff. They traded, as we mentioned earlier, to get Goff. He's going to be back under center for the Lions. Remember when he was Jeff, Jeff Fisher, he didn't win a game. Here comes Sean McVay, leads him to a Super Bowl, Super Bowl 54. Yes, they lost it to the Patriots, but they accomplished a lot of good things. In his third season now with the Lions, they won their division title for the first time in nearly 30 years. They host a playoff game for the first time since January 8, 1994. You were in high school. <laughs> Goff, like Stafford, facing a team that made him number one. All right. How does Goff handle this situation? You know, let me first say how much I respect what Goff has done. He's improved his game so much. Um, but this situation is different, man. You know, he's going up against Stafford, a first ballot Hall of Famer. That's right. Goff is trying to prove himself. And he's he's doing it when Stafford is loved by all. S to me, Goff is only liked right now. <laughs> if he wants to get to the love status, to earn his love and respect, right. Goff must win this game and play well and play well it's important that not only do they win the game he must play well if he's ever wanting to become the guy in Detroit and get the love that he so so wants yeah I'm not saying this with confirmation bias it is the game this weekend we're going to take our first time out still ahead we're going to get a little defenses defensive as we talk to Raheem Morris about his unit Roland tells about Aaron Donald what he needs to do against the third ranked offense in the NFL and what his teammates need to do to make it a little easier. Also running back Kyron Williams with a sensational year. How can he continue this play in the postseason as coming up on Wild Card Showdown, the Rams against the Lions. And welcome back to Wild Card Showdown, Rams against the Lions. I'm Kurt Sandoval along with Super Bowl champion, an eight-year NFL veteran, Roland, the man, the man with many rings, Williams. <laughs> hey, we should point out real quick, this is what you get when you win a Super Bowl. Every player gets one of these? Yes, it's playoff time. Uh, I'm going from four rings down to one, the main one, Super Bowl championship with the Rams, the greatest show on turf. And one thing people don't know that we all got was a gift from Tiffany's, a replica of the Super Bowl trophy. All right, there's an old saying in life that, Offense puts fans in the seats, mm -hmm. but defense wins championships. Yep. Is that still true in today's offensive league? I, I think it is. I think the NFL has gone out of its way to make sure that the fast paced offense all the wild long passes and elusive runs make up what brings the fans in um, defensive players are to me getting hamstrung a lot, but certainly the game is all about offense, but to win. I believe good defense is very valuable. Defensive coordinator Raheem Morris will be interviewed by the Falcons. He'll be interviewed by the Chargers, among other teams. His defense is key. His unit, Detroit, tied for 29th in the league in sacks with 41. Goff leads the Lions in their third-ranked offense in the league. He was second in passing. 
clearly they've got to rattle him, right? I mean, what else? How do they accomplish this, Roland? You know, I think the Rams know Goff's kryptonite, and that is inside pressure. I think that when they give him inside pressure, blitzing, Ernest Jones is going to be a big part of that. Mm. I think that when he's blitzing, Aaron Donald, Kobe Turner, they must generate the pressure inside. Goff does not have that escapability, and when he gets pushed out of the pocket, he is very average. He looks at his stat. When he has a clean pocket, Goff is second highest QB rating in the National Football League. When he has pressure, he falls all the way down to 17th. That says the story about what they need to do with golf. Get him moving, and they are in trouble. That's one of these stories, in my opinion. Now, clearly, you mentioned Aaron Donald. He's one of the leaders, the three-time defensive player of the year, 10-time Pro Bowler, eight-time All-Pro. Aaron Donald, in his 10th season now, AD with 53 tackles this year, 16 of them for losses, and eight sacks and three passes defend. He gets doubled and triple teamed almost every time he touches the ball. How can Aaron Donald still make a difference in this game role. You know, Kurt, I would say um, one of the things he has to do is make them really double team him. The yeah. Lions center, Frank Ragnow, is the best center in the league. Uh, the guard is not so much. If Aaron's able to make them get out of position to double team him, it opens up the opportunities that we discussed for Ernest Jones and Kobe Turner. The win-win. I think Aaron Donald at this point in his career is all about getting the job done by him forcing an honest double team is going to open up those opportunities. He had said to me this week that when he gets single team it hardly happens but he <laughs> has to take advantage of it yeah so what else do his other teammates have to do you know I think that they have to start by punishing the Lions for double teaming Aaron Donald I think that the good news about having Kobe Turner someone who I believe is a Pro Bowl caliber player defensive player of the year kind of guy when he succeeds it's going to force them to now go maybe double team someone else open up opportunities for Aaron Donald to be the man that we know he is all right let's go to the offense of side of the ball. The running game is huge for the Rams, especially with the emergence of second year player Kyron Williams out of Notre Dame, who made every fantasy football owner, including our producer Dave Brill, very happy and a few more bucks in his pocket. But I diverse. <laughs> what does a good running game, especially because the Lions are pretty stout, second in the league against stopping the run? Yeah, I think when you run, we talked about earlier their time of possession. A big part of yeah. doing that is running the football. That's right. When you do that, it makes life so much easier for offensive coordinators, for the O-line, for the quarterback. They play off the play action works better. And most importantly, your defense gets a chance to rest. I think that when you think about going deep into the playoffs, you got to be mindful of the time of possession, the, the strain you're putting on the team, right. and save your weapons until you need them. And the running game makes life so much easier. Well, with all due respect to Raheem, who says stats are for losers, I want to tell people this. <laughs> Kyron was incredible. He finished third with 1,044 yards, just 23 yards behind the Titans' Derrick Henry and the Niners' Christian McCaffrey. But Williams missed five games this year. As we mentioned, the Lions second in the NFL in rushing yards, giving up 88 yards per game. Kyron averaging 95 and five yards per touch. Rolling for the Rams to find success on the ground against a very stout front seven. What do you got to do? I think you got to stick with what's best for Kyron, and that's the gap in power runs. The Ram leads the NFL and runs with motion. The Rams lead the NFL mm. with jet motion. This forces defenders to respect the outside, but they're doing that to get back to the gap in power. That's who the Rams are. When they give Kyron the ability to hit it up inside, he's hard. He gets to run downhill. I think it gives the Rams the best chance to be successful. We've got a lot more to dig in with all the storylines, but we're going to take a break, break right now. Excuse me. And when we come back, we'll talk more about Sunday's Rams Lions playoff game. And Rob Fukazaki chats with WXYZ sports anchor Gina Trotman to get the Lions point of view. She grew up in Detroit and how they feel about Matthew Stafford in this game. Also, how comfortable will Ram fans be if the game comes down to the foot of Brett Maher? Coming up on Wild Card Showdown with the Rams versus the Lions. Welcome back, everyone. So our Detroit affiliate at WXYZ sports anchor Gina Trotman was born and raised in Detroit and certainly knows the sports culture there. Rob Fukazaki spoke with her to get Detroit's side of this crazy wild card showdown. What is the atmosphere like leading up to this weekend as it gets closer and closer? It's so wild. I think building up to it, you're like, okay, 
look at the way this is. Look at all these scenarios. There's a really good chance Matthew Stafford and the Rams come back to Detroit. So I think the whole time, especially us trying to kind of have an idea of what the picture is going to look like, knew it could happen. And then when it actually does, you're like, it just writes itself. You cannot ask for a better matchup. I'm from here. I've been through it all. I've covered this team now for about six, seven years. The fact that they are back in the playoffs for the first time in at Ford Field in Detroit for 30 years, yeah, um, that's one thing. And then you're bringing Matthew Stafford back in, someone who is just for years had been so intertwined into Detroit, into the culture, into the community. And now he's back and the Lions have to get past him to get to the playoffs. It's just like I said, I mean, you just can't even you can't even write something bigger than this. What have the fans been saying? I mean, the lifelong Detroit Lions fans. I think that the stakes being so high with it being Matthew Stafford coming back. I think that ups people's nerves because I know a lot of people are trying to break off of the old tendencies and the Mm -hmm. old. I mean, then you have the Dallas game go the way it did and people kind of fall back into the, of course, it's the Lions. So I think the nerves are definitely heightened and I think they're heightened even more now because it is Matthew Stafford coming back. Sean McVay said he could have handled things a little differently with Jared Goff, you know, when they parted ways. Jared, you know, he, of course, says what a great coach Sean McVay is. Do you really sense a chip on Jared's shoulder heading into this game? I do, and I think you have to. I don't think you can be an elite professional athlete and not have a chip on your shoulder. He is the most diplomatic person. Um, I have tried to get answers out of him where I just know he's not going to give them to us, and he knows that too. He knows when we're asking for more. Um, I do think there there has to be a chip on his shoulder. He has to understand the this, this scenario. The Lions will win on Sunday night if what? Ooh, that's a good one. I think if they put the pressure on Matthew Stafford, I think if they can get to him fast and force him to make quicker decisions, I think that'll that'll be key. I think the secondary has to really lock in on the receivers that Matthew Stafford will be targeting because we've seen a little bit of trouble against Dallas with Lamb and against the Minnesota Vikings really on Christmas Eve and in the finale against Jefferson. Get torched by two really good receivers. And so I think what Nakua and what Cup can do can be really, really dangerous. But I think Detroit getting C.J. Garner-Johnson back is right at the right time. The secondary has been good. Um, They'll have to be good, I think, is huge. And, I mean, the defense has been really hungry. And I think if they can do that, that'll be big. The Lions are good when Goff is good. So if Goff can avoid a turnover game, the Lions are really good when he's on. When he is steady and when he's consistent, um they're good and the o-line has been a huge part of that and i think that's probably the most steady thing about this lions team so i think it's kind of going to be a culmination of things but probably pressuring stafford and not pressuring golf is probably the way to go (laughs) okay well thank you so much for doing this tina and good luck enjoy sunday night Yeah, it is going to be a party Sunday night. We're going to take a quick break again. Plenty more to discuss with Super Bowl champion Roland Williams. How concerned should the Rams and their fans be if it comes down to a field goal by Brett Maher? Roland will try to calm all of our nerves on that one. Dan Campbell will be coaching his first playoff game. Is that an issue against the Rams? Coming up is Wild Card Showdown. Rams against the Lions rolls on. Welcome back to Wild Card Showdown. The Rams special teams have been anything but special this year let's face it especially the kickers Brett Maher started the year as the kicker but in the first seven games of the season he was seven of nine for 40 to 49 yards out just three of 70 beyond 50 and then he missed an extra point and was cut in favor of Lucas Haversick who in nine games was nine of 15 from 40 to 49 and five of 10 at the longer distance but he missed five extra points so they let Haversick go here comes Maher again who missed an extra point up in Santa Clara last week Roland how comfortable are you if this game comes down to the foot of Brett Maher well, let's talk about this holistically. Uh, the Rams entered this matchup rate, raking nearly bottom of the league in every special team. Last in kickoff return, 27th in punt return, 29th in field goal posi- percentage, 31st in net punting. But, but here's my optimism. 
The Rams are 18 for 18 in field goals inside of 40 yards. So mm -hmm. as long as the kick is within 40 yards, I feel very confident. It's going to be cold, but it's indoors. All right, Coach McVay is going to be coaching in his 11th playoff game. This will be Dan Campbell's first. McVay, a Super Bowl champion, 7-3 in the postseason how is that an advantage does that play into this thing um, I think it's an advantage for sure because not only is there a Super Bowl coach there's also a room full of Super Bowl players and I think mm -hmm. that when you have people who've been there done that locker room full of champions they know how to keep everyone calm focused and disciplined and focused on the job that's just what the young Ram team needs and the Detroit Lions won't have that so much in their locker room all right Super Wild Card weekend ends Monday right here on ABC 7 fifth seeded Phil Philadelphia against Tampa Bay to take on the South. Philly lost five of six. The Bucks won five of six. Coverage begins at five. After the game, join Rob and my man, Roland Williams, Super Bowl champion. All right, one final question. This one coming from Jared Goff. Um, <laughs> should I be concerned that Aaron Donald texts me this week? Jared, be afraid, my friend. Be very afraid. Aaron Donald and that defense is coming to hunt you. Detroit is looking for you to be the man. And here in L.A., we're still not convinced that you're the guy. Good luck to you, my friend. However, go Rams. <laughs> you know, someday I'm going to grow up. Today is not that day. I'll just say that right now. Give me your quick score for Sunday night. Um, I think that the Rams are going to score some points. Yep. Gonna, I think they're going to get about 36 points. So I got 36-28. Okay, I got 38-31. Rams. Okay. I think Matthew Stafford's going to light it up. Love this guy personally. Yes. But I do, and we were talking off the air. I think he still has to prove he can do more yep. uh, under pressure. Great thanks guy. for joining us for Wild Card Showdown Rams versus Lions. Our thanks to Roland, producer Deho, Big Daddy Souk, Lita Gardner, Rob Fukazaki. I'm Kurt Sandoval. Eyewitness News is up next. Stay with us. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get more great ABC7 content by clicking the subscribe button for our YouTube channel. And download the ABC7 Los Angeles streaming app on Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV, and Roku to watch on your TV.